There we go. So I promised you um, a little announcement for something exciting that's beginning in November. And it's along those lines of gathering together. Um, I have the wonderful privilege of gathering with you guys physically every Sunday. Um, there's not many people who do have that privilege right now, but I do. And I really thrive on it, as Jacob was saying. Um, the the wonder of having that foretaste of, of eternity now on earth. Um, we see a little bit of that, don't we? And it's been even more the case as we've had the music back in the building. Um, it's been really, really powerful, even though we can't sing, uh, to listen together and to be sitting under God's word together physically as well. So I've really thrived on that. Uh, and that's what our announcement is about, really. Um, as you know, um, the, the talk right now is, uh, is of another six months of, uh, of, of this pandemic and of um, semi-lockdown and restrictions and, and what have you. So we know probably that for the next six months until Easter, probably, we're not going to be able to fit everyone in the building um, all at once, which is a real sadness. So the committee met last week and uh, we have decided that now is the time it would be wise to uh, have double the number of services so that we can fit everyone into the building every week. Um, for everyone who'd like to come, they can come to church every single Sunday from the beginning of November. And uh, the way we're going to do this is by introducing uh, a second morning service. So having two morning services. Uh, now, um, I can't give you the, the question that's on your mind. Uh, the answer to the question is, what times are they going to be? Um, I'm not going to tell you uh, because um, we're actually going to have a little poll <coughs> starting tomorrow uh, where you can actually be having a little bit of input into what you think the best service times are. We're going to give you a couple of options. Um, and you can uh, let us know what you think would be the best times for those two morning services. Anyway, um, the, the plan is that you'll still need to book in, but that you can book in every single week. We'll still live stream them as well um, for those who, who can't be there, but we really would encourage you, if you can, to be there because it's so valuable and that the live stream will now become sort of the secondary thing from November. At the moment, it's sort of the primary thing, isn't it? It's the main thing. Um, but the, the physical gathering will become the main thing. The live stream will be kind of a looking in sort of thing to the physical gathering from November. Now, there's loads of questions. I know we, we're wondering. Um, some of those answers would be, yes, um, the music team are working on plans for perhaps uh, those who can, uh, playing at both services, for example. Obviously, the, 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 the sermon, the leading and everything will be the same at both services. Um, children's work is the is the tricky area. Um, uh, for now, our our decision is that we'll only run children's work at the earlier service. Now we'd love to run children's work at both services, uh, but it's a big ask for the leaders, and we just don't have a big enough team right now to do that. We'd love to, and this could be your opportunity to come forward and say <coughs> you'd like to help with that, and then maybe in time we could do children's work at both services. There'll be a way to do that on the survey I send out, a uh, poll that I send out from tomorrow. Um, but for now, it will just be children's work at one service. Now, um, our, the thing we really don't want to see is kind of the church family kind of compartmentalised into two compartments. Um, and we're going to do all we can to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, the ways we're going to do that, here are some ways. We're going to have an all-age service once a month. And at that all age service, we hope people will mix up between <coughs> the two services um, because um, there'll be no children's work at all on those days. Don't forget, we, we can't run a creche at all. So for any families with any creche age children, well, you can go to either service, whichever service, or flip between them as you wish and mix up. We're also going to encourage some families um, each week to attend the later service because we can't actually fit all the trekkers into one group currently anyway. So we'll try and make sure that both services are equally noisy because uh, uh, that's how Grace Church works really, isn't it? As we well know. Um, so that's, that's the plan there. Uh, we're also going to hopefully have link up lunches every so often as well. And uh, the next one we're going to put into November. I'll let you know the date for that. Um, soon. Um, so those are the rough plans. This is only a temporary plan. Uh, this is only until 
Easter. Now, I know Easter sounds a long way away, but in, uh, in pandemic terms, it probably isn't a very long way away. This is not the plan for the long term. This is the interim plan until we can come back together as one church family. We really want to still be one church family. Um, I think it's probably all I need to say for now. We've got a few things to pray for. Um, worth saying that um, if you've got anything you'd like to say about this, um, there's an opportunity to comment on the poll that I'll be sending out tomorrow. But if you'd like to chat it through with someone from the committee, this is where the lay leaders in the committee come into their own. Because if you feel you don't want to talk to me about it, you can talk to any of us. So you can talk to um, David Parker, uh, Jonathan, um, Nicholas, um, Bev, uh, Sarah, uh, or Jacob as our as our volunteer minister. So you can talk to any of us and we'll very happily chat to you about these things. Right, let me share with you some prayer points. But first of all, I'm going to stop recording.